A somber anniversary echoes in the minds of many royal watchers, that of the untimely and tragic death of Diana, Princess of Wales. Mother of one future king and grandmother of another, Diana's memory still looms large over the global royal landscape. While there are many sad chapters of Diana's story, today let's survey some of the sparklier aspects of her royal life and their history. You will notice many of her favorite jewelry pieces feature sapphires to match her lovely blue eyes. The Swan Lake Necklace. Diana's last official engagement before her death, three months later, was a trip to the Royal Albert Hall to see Swan Lake. For the performance, she wore a necklace that Gerard designed with her input. Gerard later ma added matching earrings, never worn by Princess Diana, also made of diamonds and pearls to the necklace. The suite was sold after Diana's death to a private collector. A Ukrainian couple bought the jewels in 2010 for $632,000. In the year of the 20th anniversary of Diana's death, they hoped that the value increased and put the necklace up for auction at $12 million. The necklace contains 178 diamonds and pearls. And while it is undeniably stunning, it is the historical significance that really increases the piece's value. Diana's Swan Lake appearance was one of her last public engagements, and it was also the night she was introduced to Mohammed Fayed, father of Dodi, who died alongside Diana in the Paris car crash. Diana only wore the necklace to the performance, although the jeweler, crown jeweler Gerard, was working on a pair of earrings to go with it. Her death came before the complete set was finished. The earrings are part of the set that was sold by New York auction house Guernsey's. If the couple sold the set for $12.1 million, they would have made an $11.5 million profit. Final estimates hovered around $15 million. The Qatar Diamond and Pearl Earrings Diana's collection included a large number of pairs of pearl earrings, but this pair was a favorite. The diamond and pearl drops given to her as a wedding gift by the Emir of Qatar. The stud features a diamond floral motif with delicate pearl shaped, pear shaped pearls suspended from a chain of diamonds. Princess Diana wore these throughout her life, including when she was pregnant with Prince William. The Sultan of Oman Sapphire Suite. One of two major sets of sapphire jewels from Diana's collection, the diamond and sapphire suite was given to her by the Sultan of Oman during the 1986 tour of the Gulf States. The set features a necklace, earrings, and bracelet, all made in a distinctly modern style. The Prince and Princess of Wales made a visit to the Middle East in 1986, including a stop in Oman. There, Sultan Cabos hosted the couple. Cabos, who was educated in England and served in the British Army, had significant ties to the Windsors. In a gesture of continuing friendship, he presented Diana with a suite of jewels set with diamonds and sapphires. The earrings, necklace, and bracelet featured design elements typical of the 1980s, as well as an overall crescent motif representing the crescent of Islam carried through each piece. In 1986, illegal immigration hadn't quite overwhelmed England yet, and so the crescent was a suitable symbol, whereas now it would be a little offensive in light of the mass rapes of Rotherham and Birmingham girls. Diana wore the suite for the first time in public a year later during a trip to Germany. For a dinner in Bonn in November 1987, she wore the sapphires with the Spencer tiara and an off-the-shoulder velvet gown by Victor Edelstein. This is the famous Travolta dress. Back in London, Diana wore pieces from the suite for another event a few weeks later. She arrived at the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden in December 1987, wearing the earrings, bracelet, and necklace from the suite. For the gala performance of Cinderella, the jewels were paired with a strapless blue star-spangled gown made by Murray Arbide. 
Diana packed the jewels in her luggage for another trip abroad a few weeks later. She wore the earrings and necklace from the Sapphire Suite for a fashion show at the Sydney Opera House in January 1988. This time, she paired the jewels with an electric blue dress by Bruce Oldfield with blue and hot pink accessories, obviously including her trademark blue eyeliner. One of Diana's final appearances in the Sapphires came in October 1995. She wore the complete suite, the earrings, necklace, and bracelet, with one of her signature 90s tank dresses for the gala premiere of the film Haunted. Queen Mary's Lover's Knot Tiara is arguably the most magnificent heirloom jewel worn by Diana during her tenure as Princess of Wales. This is Mary, Queen Mary's Lover's Knot Tiara made in 1913 for Queen Mary. It was a copy of a tiara owned by Mary's family, the Cambridges and the Cambridge Knot Tiara. The Queen presented the tiara to Diana shortly before her royal wedding in 1981. Today, the tiara is back in the Windsor vaults. In 1913, Queen Mary of the United Kingdom decided it was time to add to her tiara collection. Rather than buying a completely new piece, she looked to her own jewelry box as a source of materials. She had the Ladies of England tiara dismantled completely. She also had the upright pearls removed from the girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara, and she had a single pearl taken from the Richmond and Women of Hampshire brooches. Additional pearls were sourced from various pieces of jewelry that had belonged to her mother, the late Duchess of Teck. Queen Mary ordered a new tiara from Gerard, which was made using this cache of gathered diamonds and pearls. For a model, she used the Cambridge Lover's Knot tiara, which was often worn by her aunt and godmother, the Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz In 1913, the Cambridge Lover's Knot belonged to Mary's cousin, Judah of Montenegro, and it's possible she missed this beautiful tiara. The new tiara, Queen Mary's Lover's Knot tiara, features diamond lover's knot elements framed by pearls. 19 pear-shaped pearls are fixed in an upright position at the top of the tiara. 19 more are suspended from the lover's knots. The tiara's frame is made of silver and gold. The piece was made by E. Wolf and Company on commission from Gerard, and the knots look like little pretzels. In 1926, the tiara was done, and Queen Mary was photographed in it by W. D. Downey. In 1932, the tiara was altered so that all of the upright pearls could be detached from the tiara. Eventually, these upright pearls were removed from the tiara completely, perhaps to be sold or incorporated into other pieces. In 1953, Queen Mary died, and the lover's knot tiara was bequeathed to her granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth II. From 1953 to 1954, Queen Elizabeth took the tiara with her on the lengthy Commonwealth tour, wearing it multiple times in various countries. She wore the tiara with rubies and diamonds in Tasmania. In 1955, she wore the tiara for a farewell dinner for Winston Churchill at 10 Downing Street. In 1958, Queen Elizabeth wore the tiara at the premiere of the film Dunkirk. She paired it with Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee necklace and Queen Alexandra's wedding earrings. In 1981, Lady Diana Spencer married Elizabeth II's eldest son, the Prince of Wales. The Queen presented Diana with several pieces of family jewelry, including the lover's knot tiara at the time of the wedding. Many argued that these were gifts, but the Roberts book confirms that they were basically lifetime loans. Diana wore the Lover's Knot tiara at the state opening of Parliament in November 1981. In 1982, she wore the tiara for a banquet held at Hampton Court Palace. In 1983, Diana wore the tiara during a visit to New Zealand, and she also wore the tiara during a Canadian visit the same year. In 1985, Diana was photographed in the tiara with pearl earrings for a dinner at the British Embassy in Washington, D.C.
In 1986, she wore the tiara in Saudi Arabia. In 1989, she made a memorable appearance in the tiara in Hong Kong, pairing it with a pearl-encrusted gown and jacket by Catherine Walker, really making it sparkle. In 1991, she wore the tiara at an official dinner in Brasilia and was photographed in stunning black and white portraits with it. Diana, unlucky in love to her husband, was sadly suited to this lover's knot. For me, this tiara was made for Diana. In 1996, after Diana's death, the tiara was returned to the royal vaults. In 2012, the tiara was photographed in careful detail for Hugh Roberts' book, The Queen's Diamonds. The book confirms that the tiara still belongs to Queen Elizabeth. It also confirmed that the piece's correct name is Queen Mary's Lover's Not Tiara, and it did not change its name during its possession by Diana. In 2015, the Duchess of Cambridge wore the Lover's Knot tiara in public for the first time at the annual diplomatic reception at Buckingham Palace. In 2016, the Duchess of Cambridge wore the tiara for a second time in public, again at the annual diplomatic reception at Buckingham Palace. The Diamond Pendant Necklace Diana regularly wore a simple diamond necklace that could take various pendant pieces. The diamond necklace was part of a larger jewelry gift she received from the Saudi crown prince on her wedding. The large sapphire and diamond pendant that she often wore with the necklace also came with the Saudi suite. But Princess Diana often swapped out the sapphire for a diamond pendant with a Prince of Wales feather motif that once belonged to Queen Alexandra reportedly. That pendant was apparently an engagement gift from the Queen Mother. The Prince of Wales feather pendant could also be worn with a detachable emerald drop completing the necklace. The Prince of Wales feather pendant brooch was originally a wedding gift to Princess Alexandra of Denmark from the ladies of North Wales when she married the Prince of Wales who would later become King Edward VII in 1863 including an oval of 18 brilliant cut diamonds accented with tiny emeralds. The brooch includes the Prince of Wales ostrich feathers and a scroll inscribed with the Prince of Wales motto, Ich dien, German for I serve. After Queen Alexandra's death in 1925, the brooch ended up with the Queen Mother. The central piece of the pendant is the Prince of Wales crest, which is flanked by blue sapphires and features small white diamonds, rubies, and emeralds that are likely to represent the Welsh flag. Surrounding the crest are 18 Edwardian cut diamonds and 36 small round cut emeralds. Hanging from the bottom of the pendant is a 15 carat detachable green cabochon emerald. Featuring a total weight of approximately 25 carats, the piece would be expected to fetch 336,000 pounds today. In 1981, the Queen gifted Diana the brooch to celebrate her engagement to Prince Charles. The first time the late Princess of Wales wore it, it was suspended from a diamond tennis necklace, part of the Saudi Sapphire Suite, during a visit to the Royal Opera House in 1982. It's not known when the pendant returned to the Prince of Wales, either after their divorce or after Diana's death, but Charles later passed the brooch on to Camilla. Queen Consort Camilla began wearing the pendant in the early 2000s, with arguably the most important moment falling in 2005 when she wore the brooch for her wedding ceremony to King Charles in Windsor. Quite the move for a favorite piece of Princess Diana's wedding jewelry. A significant part of the brooch is the crest of the Prince of Wales ostrich feathers, making it recognizable in photos today. Historians cannot be concrete on the origins of this symbol, but one of the most widely recorded stories includes a historic Prince of Wales literally picking up feathers in battle. This story goes back to Edward, the Black Prince, eldest son and heir apparent of Edward III of England. The Black Prince was one of the leading knights fighting personally in the Hundred Years' War. At the Battle of Cressy, the Black Prince was said to have slain John I of Bohemia, what is now Hungary. 
the Black Prince plucked the ostrich feathers from the dead king's helmet and adopted his motto of Ichdin to emphasize his heroic victory. We see the impact German and German families have had the British royal family, have had to the British royal family, extending to today. The Queen Mother's Sapphire Brooch. The Queen Mum had more gifts in store for Diana. For her wedding, she gave her new granddaughter-in-law a large oval sapphire and diamond brooch. In the early years of her marriage, Diana wore the piece as a brooch, but she quickly had it converted into the clasp of a seven-strand pearl choker. This is not to be confused with her 11-strand pearl necklace choker. This was one of the largest pieces of jewelry that Diana continued to wear even after her separation and divorce, and she famously donned it in her black revenge dress. Many of the Queen Mother's sapphire brooches came from the Romanovs, and it's possible that this one did too. The Delhi Durbar Emerald Choker The lover's knot tiara wasn't the only piece of Queen Mary's jewelry that Diana wore. She was also frequently spotted wearing the Art Deco Diamond and Emerald Choker from the Delhi Durbar Parur. Along with wearing this as a traditional choker necklace, she famously used it as a headband while dancing with her husband. The gorgeous piece with a market value guessed to be almost 20 million US dollars was made famous by Diana when she wore it on her head as a bandeau during a dance with Prince Charles in Melbourne in 1985. As per the royal biographer Kitty Kelly, Princess Diana did not intentionally wear the choker as a bandeau, but instead it stuck on her forehead as she tried to wear it and was not going below her nose, so she decided to keep it as a head ornament for the night. Originally a 16 emerald choker, it belonged to Queen Mary, wife of King George V and grandmother of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Mary received the stunning diamond and emerald necklace as a gift in 1911 during the Delhi Durbar from the Maharani of Patalia. The choker was part of the Delhi Darbar Parur. Queen Mary was very fond of jewels and she liked the piece and was seen wearing it many times. She had it redesigned to its current 14 emeralds set in platinum in the Art Deco style in 1921 by Garrard. You can see the original choker on Queen Mary in photos. Queen Elizabeth II appears not to have worn it. After the 1911 Delhi Durbar, which also happened to be the last British Durbar in India, the Queen wore, wrote a personal thank you note to the Maharani for the beautiful emeralds and said that the jewels will be passed to future generations as an imperial heirloom and shall always stand as a token of the first meeting of an English queen with the ladies of India. That is, we are keeping the emerald choker. The Saudi Sapphire Suite. This set of faceted sapphire and diamond jewelry given to Diana as a wedding present by the Saudi crown prince was extensive. It included a diamond necklace mentioned before with its sapphire and diamond pendant, which could be exchanged, plus earrings, a bracelet, a ring, and a watch. Diana innovated with this set of jewels, transforming the watch and ring into a choker, again more famously worn as a headband, and another necklace. Made from parts of a suite given as a wedding present from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia in 1981, it was described by Leslie Field in the Queen's Jewels as made by Asprey. It contains an enormous Burmese sapphire pendant set in a jagged sunray fringe of baguette diamonds and hung on a thin diamond necklace. A matching pair of earrings and ring, a two-row bracelet of brilliant cut diamonds with a smaller version of the sapphire fire pendant as a centerpiece, and a wristwatch, the face set in the same diamond sunray fringe, and the strap consisting of seven oval sapphires set in clusters of diamonds. This suite was set to be broken, however, as it seems Kate Middleton may have worn some redesigned pieces of jewelry to meet with the President and First Lady of Ukraine in 2021. Again, we see the fundraising and money laundering from Ukrainian leaders among the elite of the West. 
For her and Prince William's first audience at Buckingham Palace since the start of COVID, the Duchess of Cambridge wore a custom blue Amelia Wickstead dress with long sleeves and a matching belt, which she paired with diamond and sapphire drop earrings and a new coordinated pendant. The matching set looked very similar to a pair of earrings regularly worn by Princess Diana that was in the Saudi Sapphire Suite. The, oh, the opulent diamond and sapphire pieces were a wedding present and frequently worn by Diana on royal tours, so perhaps Duchess Kate thought that it would be suitable for her diplomatic meeting. The last known appearance of the Saudi Sapphire Suite was in 1987 when the Princess of Wales wore them to a dinner with Prince Charles at the Hotel, Hotel Hyatt in Melbourne. The suite was inherited by Prince William and Prince Harry in 1997 and then gifted to Kate Middleton by Prince William in 2010 after he proposed because the set matches her sapphire engagement ring. The earrings from the set have become one of Kate's signature styles over the years after she made them less flashy by removing the detachable lower sapphires and refashioning the upper portion into a drop style. And she finally found a use for the larger removable stones, turning one into a new matching pendant necklace, and so they now look completely different than when they did when Diana had them. The Spencer Tiara. While this tiara never belonged to Diana, it's a Spencer family piece owned by the Earl, her uncle. It's the tiara that is very associated with her. She wore the diamond floral sparkler on her wedding day and on many occasions afterward. It was her favorite as Queen Mary's lover's knot tiara was simply too heavy and the pearls would click as she moved her head. The Spencer tiara was made for Cynthia Spencer, wife of the seventh Earl Spencer. Cynthia was Queen Elizabeth's lady of the bedchamber, so she needed plenty of jewels to wear to events to which she accompanied the new queen. It features swirls of diamond stars. The central part of the Spencer tiara is a heart-shaped piece that Lady Cynthia Hamilton received as a wedding present for her 1919 marriage to Albert Viscount Althorpe, the future seventh Earl Spencer. Diana had no problem relying on her own family jewels showing her self-sufficiency. Prior to her marriage to Prince Charles, she often wore a gold Cartier Russian wedding ring of three yellow gold bands on the little finger of her right hand and a diamond and white gold eternity ring from her family. In the mid-1970s, John Spencer, the eighth Earl Spencer, inherited the Spencer tiara. It was subsequently worn by all three of, her, his, of his daughters at their weddings, Lady Jane in 1978, Lady Sarah in 1980, and finally Lady Diana the following year in 1981. Of all of Diana's glittering jewels, the one you'll see in public most often these days is her sapphire and diamond engagement ring. Made by Gerard, the ring features a large faceted sapphire surrounded by diamonds. It remains a favorite and has spurred thousands of lookalikes for today's brides. In 2011, Diana's elder son, the Duke of Cambridge, gave the ring to his future bride, Kate Middleton. Jewelry is a very visual way to keep a royal line going. The Duke of Cambridge noted their engagement during their engagement interview that giving Kate the ring was his way of ensuring that his mother didn't miss out on such an important occasion in his life. Those were Princess Diana's favorite jewels, all 10 of them. Which is your favorite? And what is your favorite Princess Diana memory?